Hi everyone, it's Kelly Van Washington over here with Denison's Educational Technology Services. And this week I'm bringing back our weekly EdTech tips. As we all find new ways to adapt to teaching and learning in this semester, video has become one of the driving forces for connecting with our students and with each other. In a regular semester, the second half often involves projects like presentations, something that might pose unique challenges in this hybrid semester. In this EdTech tip, I'm going to go over one way that students can do virtual presentations for classes. I'll be focusing on pre-recording these presentations rather than doing them live during a class because this offers the most flexibility and a smaller margin of error where technology is concerned. For more information about virtual student presentations this semester, see my longer post on the Fall 2020 website that we have, and the link is below in the description of this YouTube video. So let's get to the EdTech. Okay, so we're talking about virtual presentation assignments and everything that comes with it. Just to give you an idea of the structure that I'm going to be discussing, um, the ideas are that one and two here where you're assigning the presentation and the students are preparing the presentation, those are kind of covered before I get to the part that I'm discussing, which really are numbers three through six here, record presentations, submit recorded presentations, view presentations, and provide feedback on presentations. So that's going to be the focus of what I cover. Um, and then there's also, in my mind, a seven where there's an opportunity to reflect. So picking up at part three, we can start discussing recording presentations. We have a ton of resources available for students, and I put the tiny CC in here. So this is a page that you can actually give to your students. It outlines different technology they can use to do the recording of a virtual presentation. I highly recommend suggesting they just go with doing Google Meet and slides if there is a slide component. This is going to be the easiest option for them. I'm actually using Google Meet and Google Slides right now to present and also capture myself as the speaker. So this is what it would look like by default using Google Meet and Google Slides. The next option here is Zoom. And in Zoom, Zoom's great for teaching. It has extra bells and whistles that are wonderful, like breakout rooms and polling. Students don't need that when they're just recording a virtual presentation, so they can use it, but I do recommend going with Meet since it is simpler. Then the last option down here is Loom. That's another one. It's um, not a Denison application, but it's one that we've taken a look at and we really like. So I put it in here as an option. Um, the biggest difference with Loom and the others is that in Loom, you can actually edit the presentation. So if that's something that your students need to be able to do, they might want to go with Loom instead. Otherwise, the simplest and most straightforward is that Google Meet option. Uh, for each of the options outlined here on this site, we've included a video and a step-by-step -step process for how to do that. Okay, so that's how to record presentations for students. This is the info that they need. There is the URL for that. So next, uh, submitting and collecting the recordings. The students will be the ones submitting. You obviously, as the professor, will be the one collecting those. Um, I'm proposing a bit of a hybrid model that allows both synchronous and asynchronous students to participate. And to do that, I'm going to show you a Noteble discussion board assignment. So let me just pull up Noteble. In my Assignments tab, I would just click Add and create a new assignment. Since I've already made this example one, I'm going to choose Edit on an existing one, and then I can show you exactly how I set this up. So I named it Video Presentations, put it in a category, gave it points and all of that. The description here I will cover in one moment, but I'm going to scroll down a bit because the submission type that I chose is Discussion Board. 
I'm setting this up as a discussion board in Notebull, and this is because I want students to be able to post their videos, I want other students in the class to be able to watch their videos, and then I also want students in the class to be able to respond to those videos, to ask questions, to give feedback, things like that. So I've chosen discussion board, individual, Individual discussion boards are the kind that every student in the class can post and discuss with other students. I've also included down here some uh, other options where minimum number of posts is one, comments two, and uh, to hide all the posts until they've at least posted their own. This way, students are required to post their presentation before they can view others. So up here in the description, now descriptions are incredibly important for assignments, obviously. I say here, see the attached assignment sheet for specific assignment requirements. So the ass assignment sheet, I just did a placeholder one that I attached and you'll see what that looks like. But here, I call out, make sure to name your video file with your last name before you attach and upload it. That's the first thing I say, and you'll see why in a bit when I go over my submissions. They have two parts of this discussion board. The first one is due on 928 by 1159 p.m., and that is to attach your video presentation to the discussion board using the attach button. And I also have them adding it to this Google folder here. They'll be able to click on the link as a backup and that's also if you're planning to show these live in class it's much easier to just open that google folder instead of trying to scroll through the discussion board so my my thought is in class on 9 29 that's when we would be viewing them i could even say that and then do on 10 1 comment on at least two see the assignment sheet for details so again keeping the description here about submission and I'm keeping the assignment sheet, the one that has all the content information. So I can go ahead and save that. Then I'm going to click here on this video presentations assignment. And in here, you'll see that I just read all over this when I pulled up the professor view of the assignment. They can click there to go put them in that Google Drive folder. And then down here, I can see the discussion board and I can see the videos that have been submitted. But this is how I am collecting them, how they are submitting. You can always also go to the More tab in a notebook course and choose View As. I'd pick a specific student so you can see exactly what they see. But sometimes this is helpful to see how students see the discussion board and things like that. So then you can see exactly how they're experiencing it and take a peek at what they see. So viewing the presentations. A few things to keep in mind. You could either play the presentations during a live class or you could have the students watch video on their own and just using that discussion board in Notebook. If you play it during a live class, do keep in mind that streaming video is not seamless in any conferencing tool, so it's not going to be perfect. Dubbing might be off depending on what you're using and things like that. Um, also, if you have very long presentations you want students to watch, I wouldn't recommend streaming those in class. It would probably be a better experience for the students if they watch those before coming to class. However, I do understand the need to sometimes play them during your live class session. Also, please keep in mind um, those students who are not in class, those students tuning in remote who might not have the same experience if you are in a in-person classroom at Denison. Um, if you're in person and you're playing them through Zoom and also playing them for your class there, do have someone watch chat and keep an eye out for those remote students who might need some additional help or who might have questions so they can still participate in class. Okay. So if I'm playing this during a live class, I can do that either using Zoom or Google Meet. So first I'm going to show you how to do that with Google Meet. But before you even get to that part, 
always have your videos ready to go. Um, I'm just going to play them through this tab. I have a tab open with that folder, but I could play them directly from my Noble page if I wanted from this Noble discussion board where they submitted. So just have that ready to go. And if you download them on your computer first, that's also fine. Um, that might even be better in the long run to just have them downloaded, but wherever you have them, have them ready to go. So first let's take a look at Meet. You can see now, I think the recording is a little choppy and that's because I'm trying to run two Meets at once. So bear with me on that. But if I go down to present now, it gives me the option to present a Chrome tab, and it says that is best for video and animation. And I can go ahead and choose if I'm going to do it right from Noble or that Google Drive folder. Whatever you're choosing, make sure that share audio box is checked. Then I can open up this here, and I can go ahead and play the video. Then I could just play my videos here, and I can also go to the next one if they're already in order. Do keep in mind that the videos will need to process before they'll play for you in the Google Drive, but it looks like these have all processed, and I can just skip through the folder here and play my different videos for the class. Um, we could also pause between videos, come back to the group discussion, and talk about them. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how to use this in Zoom. Now, Zoom, you'll have to open the Zoom application. And again, I'm doing dual uh, recording, so it's, it's a little choppy. But once your Zoom class is going and you're in Zoom, make sure that however you're playing the videos, whether it's through a tab in your Google Chrome browser and it's in the the drive, or you might even have it just saved on your computer, but wherever the video is, make sure you have that window open in the background of your Zoom class presentation. And then for your class, you will go to share, and you can choose to share the entire desktop or just a specific window, and I'm just going to choose this window. There are also additional options that Zoom has to optimize screen and to share computer sounds. So I'm going to check both of those options and then hit share. So I can go ahead and I can play those videos here for everyone in the class to see. And when you're done and in between the videos, you can always stop sharing, hi again, <laughs> and have class discussion. The obvious alternative to playing during a live class is of course to have students watch it on their own and then just comment in the discussion board there. And that would be the option that students who are asynchronous would probably take. Okay, and then providing feedback on presentations. So um, this is a great opportunity to really use those discussion board features and giving them the ability to respond to each other in the discussion board. So let's take a look at the discussion board again. And you can see here that we have the videos, so students could actually rewatch the same presentation they saw in class if they missed something. And then students can also go ahead and comment on those videos. They can comment with another video and it really creates a dialogue that's inclusive to any students who are asynchronous or synchronous for the class presentations. It also gives you an easy view in the submissions area to go ahead and scroll through and see who has completed the assignment um, based on your assignment requirements and where they are with that. You can also click the magnifying glass since this is a discussion board and you can flip through the students posts and comments right in here for easy grading. 
Well, what else is there to say? If you need any help with designing a virtual class presentation for your students, or if you want someone to come in and do some lab time with your students to go over anything, you can go ahead and sign up for an ETS consultation using the link right there. And I will show you what our little website looks like. This is that hybrid fall 2020 website that I keep telling everyone about. But on here, you can come to this page it tells you how to schedule the consultation, and we'd love to chat, so sign up with us. Thank you for watching this week's EdTech Tip by Denison's Educational Technology Services. For any general tech questions or to report issues, please send an email to the ITS Service Desk. They can be reached at servicedesk at denison.edu. It's really helpful when you send your tech questions there because we can assign it to the right people in ITS and get you answers as soon as possible. Thank you and have a wonderful week. Oh, and stick around if you would like some helpful tips on how to draw a cat.